Hello. Recently, the Tennessee Department of Education released the 2018 Education Report Card. Over the past year, the Tennessee DOE has worked with educators, parents, and community members to develop a new report card that presents a dashboard of key information regarding every school and district in the state. Because this information may be confusing to some, the Professional Educators of Tennessee is hosting a webinar in which Commissioner Candace McQueen, Sarah Gast, and Sh Shelby Buno will provide an overview an overview of these metrics and data and what they mean. And now I'll turn the presentation over to the Department of Education. Thank you, Bethany. This is Candace McQueen, and I appreciate you joining us for this um, opportunity to walk through the context for the state's report card, as well as um, to talk through some of the indicators that are specifically on the report card that may be new to many of the folks who are watching this. I want to say a special thank you to PET for the opportunity to share this more publicly and the continued partnership we've had as we work to communicate all of the work in the state. I'll start with some context of the new report card that is important as we begin to think about what's different and what's new on this particular report card. Um, we have been working toward a design uh, for approximately 15 to 18 months that would provide additional information to educators, parents, and community organizations in more um, conducive or easy to understand formats, uh, both in how things are laid out, uh, drill down opportunities, as well as even language translation. So we're excited that as we have rolled this out, we've gotten great feedback on the ease of use and we'll continue to improve it over time. For the first time, each of our schools in the state are receiving ratings on a handful of indicators, many of which are new under our ESSA plan that address different aspects of student success. Additionally, there's more and deeper information on each of our student groups in each of our schools across the state, and we've added a Spanish translation of the site for the first time. So this is version one of this new report card, again, that's giving specific information around school accountability that is required under the Every Student Succeeds Act. While this is version one, uh, we're proud of the initial rollout and we'll continue to improve it in years to come um, based on feedback that we hear from the field. So let's jump into what the indicators are on our new report card. We have the information grouped into six main categories that are presented in a dashboard approach. Each indicator looks at some specific aspect of student success that, that we ask our stakeholders about when we were doing our ESSA listening tour over a period of about a year. So these six indicators give us a snapshot through this dashboard of what's going on in that particular school. The first indicator is the academic achievement indicator, which is the performance that each of our students are, create, are making above grade level. So it looks at our students moving to proficiency at that school by content area. Uh, second, student academic growth. This is the measurement to see how are students doing from year to year. Are they actually progressing based on where they started? Um, and are they at grade level yet? The third indicator is new for us. It's the chronically out of school metric. Um, this is a measure of how many students are missing at least 10% of the school year. And in, in a, a typical school, that would be 18 days or more. We have an indicator on the progress that students are making who would be eligible for English language proficiency assessment. And this is how many of our students are actually progressing toward their understanding of the English language. Our fifth indicator is the ready graduate indicator. This is, a, again, a new indicator for us that is in this year's um, results measuring the percentage of students who graduate and earn at least 21 on the ACT, uh, one point that actually measures readiness for college and careers. Over time, our ready graduate indicator will evolve into including additional metrics such as um, success on early post-secondary coursework like dual enrollment, dual credit, AP exams, and it will include industry certification attainment. And then finally, we have the graduation rate indicator, which represents the percentage of students who are graduating from our high school. These indicators then um, are looked at to create a rating. Um, the rating ranges from zero to four on each indicator, with the highest score being a four. You'll note that there is no overall one rating for a school, but each of the six indicators will have the zero to four rating. 
this rating represents how well the school is doing on that metric or how much the school is improved. Again, it's whichever of the two they have the highest rating on. So we're looking at um, in significant improvement or uh, an absolute measure, how well that school is ultimately doing on the metric. Information from all student groups and then specific student groups is included. And again, there's drill down opportunities throughout the report card where you can look at a specific student group. Let's say you want to know more about how English learners are doing, and you have the ability to do that. You should think about this rating like a GPA, um, just like with a GPA context is important and all the different pieces that go into that GPA. And we know that a quality education is more than just one single score, which is why we really like the dashboard approach. Uh, you'll see for each of the rating, you get additional information. Parents can click in, community members can click in and gain more information. The information on the report card is intended to be a catalyst for conversation. Uh, we, we want to emphasize this. It is a snapshot in time that should start a conversation about improvement. It does not mean that this number is your destiny or a defining characteristic. Finally, our ratings in schools um, looked a particular way this year as we looked across the metrics and we wanted to share from an overall perspective what we saw based on 2017-18. As you know, the additional context behind every rating is important, but, but again, here's a snapshot that gives us some perspective on each of the six indicators. I want you to think of from the zero to four as two being middle of the road. So as we look at these, we had about 43% of schools that earned higher than essentially the middle of the road. They, they earned more than a two. Um, in student growth, slightly larger percentage, we had 50% of schools earning higher than a two. Chronically out of school, uh, a much larger percentage, 71% of schools earned higher than two. English language proficiency, 59% of schools earned higher than a two. And then these last two are interesting to look at side by side. Our ready graduate indicator, which again is the percentage of students getting a 21 or above on the ACT at this point, 67% of schools earned higher than a two. But compare that to our graduation rate, which is much higher, 84% of schools earned higher than a two, which is why we believe the ready graduate indicator is so important, um, because that gives us a, a more full picture of readiness for the college and career field that folks will be pursuing. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleagues to walk you through some of the individual school pages and share some snapshots of how you can actually dig into this and look at it. It is now currently posted on the website uh, for some time, and so you can get into the link and begin exploring this yourself. When you guys first come into the school, they're going to land on this landing page. The landing page is a way to then jump off into a particular school or district. You can navigate it in a few main ways. So there's a search function um, that's highlighted here. You can also use the map in order to navigate through the page and to select a particular school. You can also choose to toggle to districts um, by toggling that districts and schools button. And that will allow you to actually look at the list of districts to dive into instead of the schools. So let's say you actually chose one of the schools. You'll then end up on a page that looks like this, which is the overall performance dashboard. This is what the commissioner was referring to a few moments ago when she was saying that you get, you get a score across each of these six indicators. Um, not every school, you'll notice, will get a score across all six indicators. For example, the ready graduate and the graduation rate only are there for schools that have a grade 12. In addition, the progress on English language proficiency will only be there if there are at least 10 English learners in that particular school. A, this, a user can then select the View Details button at the bottom of each of these scores in order to dig in further. One kind of note, just for context again, to repeat, each of these scores ranges from 0 to 4. So it is possible to get a 0, and it is possible to get a 4, and everything in between. And again, these are reflections of absolute performance as well as groups where available. So now when we click onto a particular indicator, so let's say we selected academic achievement, for example, we'll then see some more information about the actual metrics that underlie and are related to that particular indicator. Each of these pages looks very similar with the data presented as well as the individual scores, both the all-student score and the student 
group score, as well as the overall score, as well and some additional related metrics. You can dig in even deeper to each of these by clicking the View Details button or the View Student Group button on the side. If you click the View Details button next to one of the data metrics, you will get additional information as you can see on the board. You can see additional information about comparisons to the state, to the district, over time, particular student groups. These flyouts really are there to provide additional context as you try to dig into those numbers. In addition, you can also click the View Student Groups, which presents another flyout that gives you the individual scores that were for each of those student groups that make up that student group overall score. That's kind of the main pieces of the way you can navigate through the tool. And we're going to now kind of do a bit of a demo to show you kind of more in real time what actually navigating through that looks like. Great. Um, so as Shelby was saying, when you get to the main report card, which this is the direct link right up here, reportcard.tnk12.gov, um, you can land um, on this main page. You see the map here, and you see the list of schools just alphabetically in order. Um, so if you can um, choose to navigate by either searching for a school or navigating to a particular county, um, so if you select here, you'd select Rutherford County, you can then see all of the schools that are um, listed for that county, um, and that can include, in many cases, a local city school district um, or a special school district that might be also designated for that county. Um, if you click on a school, so for example, Blackman High School, it will then take you to the landing page for that school where you can navigate through the various indicators um, and see more information about each. As Shelby mentioned, you can click through to view details and then see additional information, um, both description of the indicator um, as well as information about where that, that came from. And so this example here, you can see the full student group um, has a very high score, but when we're looking at individual student groups, you see a little bit of a disparity there. And when you click through, you can learn more about what might be happening with um, those indicators and, and kind of which student groups may or may not need additional support. Um, this is an example here of um, frequently in, in our state, we have some schools that do not have every single student group. And so here you can see English learners, um, there's not a, enough of those to generate a student score. Um, but in count and FERPA rules, we, we do want to make sure we protect student privacy. But we always have a combined student group score that can kind of wrap up um, many of the performance that we see across all, um, all student groups. Um, when you uh, can kind of also navigate to the very bottom of the page. We include additional information, even if it was not included in the overall metric, just for, again, for context to understand what might be happening at this school. And so here you can see what the average ACT composite score was for a particular school and the number of CTE concentrators. And again, there's additional information if you click on the View Details button. You can also easily from here click to a district report or a state report. One key final feature to mention about the schools is we have this um, about this school um, component, which is new this year, and we're really excited about the opportunities it has for us um, in a couple of key ways. So it, um, the, the main one is we are able to have a message from a principal or at the district level from the superintendent or director of schools that outlines whatever that school wants to highlight. And so it's um, really neat to see kind of across the state what different schools want to make sure they really stress about their overall performance. Then when you scroll down, you can see additional information, um, including a, a lot of new information that we haven't been able to share in the past about classroom teachers, the number of administrators, and additional uh, teachers and staff information, um, which is particularly interesting when you click through. Again, you can see some comparison information, and you can see um, specifically with support staff, um, your folks like your counselors, your librarians, um, potentially like a school psychologist or others that might be present, how many um, of those are at the school. And you can see a kind of, a, a, again, in comparison to the number of students they're supporting, some context there. Um, we'll continue to add additional information as it is available and update this, particularly these pages with the um, messages as we have more um, context um, to share, or more updates to share. And um, an important final note um, before we kind of talk through a couple of questions we've gotten is um, if you go down here to the very bottom, you can see download detailed data. 
And that, um, as the URL notes, takes you to back to our department website where you can see on our data downloads page a place where you can download a variety of um, spreadsheets with additional, with, with all of this data just rolled up into one comprehensive spreadsheet. And much of that information, if not all of it, is also available on our main report card landing page, which was the first, very first URL that was dis displayed at the start of this webinar. And so you can click there to see more information. Um, a couple of questions we know we've gotten. So one I would say, just to answer off the top, is um, the district report does not, you might notice, have ratings. And that is um, by design, it's not because there's missing data. Um, the, the rating system is for schools only. Um, however, you can for, um, for districts, we have a separate accountability system, but it is here you can see where um, the very um, show in terms of the data that we, same data that we display for the school level, displayed here for the district. And so you can um, then click through and, and see how that district would then compare to the state again, look at specific student group information um, and so forth. So there is um, that component. And then, um, in, uh, again, for some schools, there will not be all ratings. And that is either because they are not um, a school that has grade 12, which is what we consider a high school here, um, or they are a school that does not have a sufficient number, particularly of English learners, to generate a rating. And so in those cases, it just simply shows an NA. Um, Shelby, any other questions you'd want to make sure we flag for this group? I think the other kind of related is you might see an A or you might see a message indicating that the data is missing. And so those are um, both ha having to do with our suppression rules to make sure that we're protecting student privacy. Absolutely. And we have more information um, about our various business rules, our suppression mm -hmm. rules, both on the main um, report card landing page, again, with the, the main link that was shared at the start of the webinar. Um, we also have much of it is, is uh, included in um, in the tool, various links that you can click through and learn more information too. Mm -hmm. um, and Bethany, of course, we are happy to take any questions that folks might have later. Um, and uh, for Shelby, like, what would be the best contact information to share for folks if they have questions about how to navigate the report card? Yeah, so we've been directing people to reach out to data.management at tn.gov. So again, that's data.management at tn.gov. So with any questions you might have, and we can do our best to answer those as quickly as possible. Great. I do think it's important that we remind um, any parents out there that are watching this um, presentation that this data is last year's data. So it's not for this year, it's for last year. That's absolutely right. This is last year's data. And one kind of additional actually caveat to note there is um, for high school data, um, that means graduation rate, ACT data. In the future, we'll also include a variety of other information about the number of um, early post-secondary courses students have taken, industry certifications they have earned, um, perhaps their ASVAB score for military readiness. Um, because of the way high school data works and because of our desire to keep getting this report card out earlier and earlier, for high school data, we actually lag that data one additional year. So when you're looking at high school um, metrics like a graduation rate or an ACT score in this tool, you're actually looking at the graduating class of 2017 this year, not the class of 2018, which just graduated this past spring. Um, but otherwise, all of the data is considered to be from the 2017-18 school year. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Bethany. We're happy to keep taking any questions that folks have and um, appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye.